for the audio this time? Yes, on this account, it, it works just fine. All right, I am Manslave, and with me is... It's Bubble Human 3. And we are watching the uh, a video put out by that cynical cynicism, and he is... Um, we're gonna have we're gonna watch his video, <clears throat> and uh, and then me and the disposable human doing are gonna offer our commentary on it, and uh, and the neighbors are being loud right now, so that might come across on the recording. But anyway, making sure my sound levels are good. And I was telling um, the disposable human doing about this video or. About the Warren Farrell um, book, um, well, appearance or whatever. Uh, and now this is his first time seeing it. This is a video by that cynical cynicism. And he's a pretty cool guy. And um, actually, the disposable human doing um, admires uh, that cynical cynicism's style in making videos and all that. So I'm going to go ahead and let him watch this. <clears throat> So I'm sure many of you are aware of the recent feminist protests outside of the University of Toronto. In case anyone doesn't know, the protests were staged by feminists who were dissatisfied at Warren Farrell speaking at the university. If you're curious as to whom Dr. Warren Farrell is, he's an author of books such as 1993's The Myth of Male Power and 2005's Why Men Earn More. The books are a factual critique of feminist claims, mm -hmm. such as that of the pay gap. Warren Farrell is a very approachable individual and easy to discuss with, as I'm sure this clip will demonstrate. When you, when you move quickly, when you work extra hours, oftentimes you don't enjoy it as much when you work in certain fields like hazardous occupations. Most people don't enjoy dying as much. And so the, um, the, uh, the outcome of doing these, these things that earn more money do not necessarily lead to a better life. So I, look, so I interview top women who have succeeded in the world in terms of financial success, and I say to them, if you were to talk to your granddaughter and advise her as to what you would do over again, what would you do differently, what would you do the same? I always say granddaughter because your children never listen. Um, so. However, despite his moderate and factual approach to critiquing feminism, his appearance at the University of Toronto sparked this response. No hate speech on campus. No hate speech on campus. What the fuck? So so this is, wait, is, did you say this is a guy who used to be on their side or whatever? Yeah, I, I, I was told that, I actually heard uh, John the other talk about it in a video. That's how I became aware wait, of this wait, the other day. Basically, I just want to make one Yeah, comment. Warren Farrell used to be a feminist and then he found so out it's, that... It's all good and fine as long as, you know, he can... He can talk as long as he's helping them out whenever he, you know, decides to tell the other side of the story or whatever. It's immediately hate speech. Mm. And then he noticed that... Remember, okay, remember Michelle Elliott. And um, he's totally, like, soft-spoken and, and... A nice guy. It's not like he's fucking screaming at the top of his goddamn lungs. He doesn't have any... He's just... A ni nice person, it seems like, and he obviously very, uh, just... <clears throat> yeah, he's very gentle and yeah. all that. Well, it. okay, remember how Michelle Elliott, the director of Kidscape, was in that Man, Woman, Myth documentary? Yeah. Remember how she used to be a feminist and then they kicked her out because... Because she basically didn't agree with their bullshit? Well, she noticed that, like... They were letting things go unpunished by other people or whatever? Yeah, and then, uh... She had a falling out with them because, and they kicked her out of the movement because she noticed that they weren't what they pretended to be. Hypocrites. Yeah. Well, that's how Warren Farrell was, from what I, you know, mm -hmm. heard John the other say. Now we'll go back to this video. And if you notice, this is exactly why feminist, and it is mostly the radical feminists who lead the feminist movement, because the earliest feminists that really came onto the scene uh, were basically rad fems. They were radical feminists, um, the, the earliest feminists. And then 
later on when feminism got really easy to be a feminist and all that and got trendy, then, you know, more soft-spoken people or... Coffee shop feminists. Yeah, the coffee shop feminists. Soccer moms. Um, you know, like Ellen Page and all them who say, you know you're living in a patriarchy when, when somebody looks at you funny whenever y you say that you're a feminist. And probably the reason why somebody looks at you funny when you say you're a feminist is like, haven't the feminists won? You know? Women can vote, and women are in the workplace. It's no longer <clears throat> about getting equal rights. It's about getting special privileges. Exactly. So anyway... Did, did Ellen Page say that? Seriously? Yeah, she's uh, actually known as being a feminist. Oh, God. Well, that's lost a lot of respect for her. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she plays in movies like Juno, and... Okay. In fact, she's in that movie Super that we were watching clips from yes, uh, last night. Mm-hmm. Yep, she's a bigot. That's, that's disappointing. They repeatedly yell, no hate speech on campus. The idea that any of Farrell's work counts as a hate speech is absurd. And when pushed for a reason why they are protesting, one feminist came up with this. One feminist came up with this. for women's studies are allowed to be on the campus. Oh, we're going to critique freedom of, this. Freedom of fucking speech. <clears throat> if you're allowed to teach your classes that, you know, I don't even, the courses or whatever, they're, uh, you know, gender studies, meh, 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 total fucking bias crap that doesn't teach you anything. If you're allowed to have that course be taught in all these campuses across the fucking country, I think you can fucking deal with someone else coming there and speaking against it, or, or not even necessarily against it, but speaking for the things that you don't like. Well, I'll tell you what, we're going to critique this very thoroughly after she gets done with her bigotry rant. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Talk today, as a response of our frustration, we're having this group posted on our campus. So we want an explanation as to why they were allowed to be on our campus. We want an explanation from our administration that let these groups be here on our campus to host this hateful event, um, and, and that has clearly resulted in dozens of students and, and community members getting attacked physically uh, by the disease. All right, well, first of all, it's everybody's campus. That's yeah. why they pay to be there. Exactly. It's not just your fucking campus. It's not just women's campus, unless it is, if it's a women's only school, which it's not. Okay. Uh, second of all, <clears throat> okay. Well, you ever notice how she looked in there? <laughs> looked like a fucking fish in water? Like, the, the face, like... It is low. From the side of room? Yeah, help me. Dozens of students and, and community members getting attacked physically. Uh, uh, that's kind of shifty. But anyway, that, that's really, like, that really doesn't Physically have been attacked today as a response. Okay, I got back to what I want, <clears throat> wanted to talk about. What she's pissed off about is the men's rights groups take away focus from women. Mm -hmm. You know... See, it's this perception that anything that benefits a man... Has to come with the detriment of women. Yeah, it's this perception that, like, 
a man cannot gain without it being at the cost of women, which really shows that these women and, and you know, and the feminist view things as if it's an eternal struggle between the genders. You know, that that's how they obviously see the so world. I guess they look at it in a sense if if a guy works at a job and gets a promotion for hard work, it, it's bad because she could have had that promotion even though she didn't work for it. Well, I guess you can express it that way, but the point is it just shows the the psychopathy of women. And the reason why we say women is because uh okay, let me clarify this. People, they only understand the surface. Okay. Uh, and they take things at face value so very much. They're so superficial and shallow. They believe what people say they're going to do. And, um, I mean, even, okay, for example, politicians. Regardless of, you know, everybody's like, well, politicians lie. Well, then why do you keep voting for them? Well, we just have to. Lesser two evils. And, uh, so anyway, um, so, okay, um, yeah, it's superficial and shallow, and you gotta understand human nature. I mean, um, like just about anybody can pick up a gun if if they're put in the in the right circumstances just about anybody can pick up a gun and defend somebody else's life mm -hmm. if they get motivated enough now some people might have different factors that might drive them to it some people are more or, or let's say no not even that you know for example somebody griping and complaining about something um, and, and, and uttering a cuss word. Some people have more of, of a threshold and they can have more self-control, but anybody, if they're pestered enough, they're going to start griping, mm -hmm. you know. So, uh, potentially, all people are complainers. You see what I'm saying? It's now it's a matter of their personal limits. Yes, and just because somebody is not known to be a complainer because they don't do it very often doesn't mean that they won't. And and the reason why I mention this is these things that, that me and the disposable human doing talk about um, and also the things Barbarossa, Stardust, um, oh gosh, Girl Writes What, uh, and a few other people, well, uh, the thing is, is that women have these things inherent to their biology and their psych and their their psychological composition. It's just that, like Barbarossa mentioned, I want to bring this up to really help people understand, because what feminism has done is it has tapped into a deep-rooted sentiment in the female psyche in the female mind, in her psychological composition, the way she's psychologically structured and all that, <clears throat> um, it, it is tapped into that and released certain, it is released certain um, psychological characteristics of women. It's open Pandora's box. It basically has, yes, open up Pandora's box. Uh, and set these things out free. Now what it does, what it did is it has unlocked a door and basically let it swing open and let whatever was in that room pour outward. Okay, now, just like men, um, Napoleon Bonaparte, the famous emperor of, of, um, of France, he mentioned that a man will fight long and hard for a piece of colored ribbon. And what that gets into is, um, well, the, uh, the protective instinct of men, and just about any, practically all men have this, and they just need something to trigger that and set it off for it to happen. Now, just because a man is not out there 
patrolling the streets in a police car uh, every day, just because he's not doing that does not mean that he doesn't have the desire to be a protector. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, or, or the capability or uh, or the uh, let's say the the inclination for it. Now, uh, as me and the disposable human doing point out, because of what we see, uh, okay, this is why we are elite MIGTO, uh, you know, elite, um, an elite version of men going their own way, and it's because we see through women's, um, surface uh well, the, the the behavior patterns you see on the surface um because I, i've seen too many women they they play this sweet girl role and then later on they show you who they really are whenever they get frustrated or whatever and you get these little pinprick reminders of how she really is uh and we both know somebody uh whom will identify as gunsley um, and we both know her personally and are around her on a frequent basis, <clears throat> um, just in our interactions. You get, get to see both sides of the coin all the time. Yes, yes, and she very much does that, very shallow, superficial, a typical woman, but yet she'll play this whole, she'll put up this whole front about, you know, to, to maintain dignity. Well, well. Well, d does she describe herself as like a traditional woman or whatever? Sometimes, yeah. yeah. Okay. Certain things is like, man, man, man. Why well, just don't, man, man. Like, okay, her actions don't match her words basically most of the time when it comes to many things. But one of the things you think most of when it comes to the way she does her relationships or whatever with people, uh, it's it's very acts as if she's well basically she's she's a you know a adult male or she's an adult female so and she has two kids so naturally at some point she's had sex and obviously she's a human she likes sex but yet she acts as if anything like for instance if I'm watching a movie well, that's gross that sex joke well, that's gross well, it's like it's a fucking joke don't act like you're better than it or something. That's a I've actually joke. heard her make some sex jokes quite oh, yeah. a bit. Yeah, and I have too. That's the thing. It, it all, it's all, it's okay if she says it, but if it, someone else says something that she doesn't like, even though it's the same thing, something bad, or or like, you know, she'll pretend like looks aren't important when she's talking about her her like you know situations or whatever. But yet, whenever I'm in my room watching a documentary, or whenever I'm doing anything really that I'm watching something that has someone that uh, she doesn't find appealing, she has to make a note of it. Like has to, well, that guy's ugly. I was like, it's this is a documentary. It, it's not a fucking. It's not like, it's not your fucking Cosmo mag. You're not. You're not. You don't come in and watch a documentary to get like, you know, to get a look at like these guys or whatever and find out and all these things. I'm not wording it very well, but basically, you don't fucking watch a documentary about, um, let's say, I don't even know, but most documentaries about things like, um, for instance, the the documentary The Cove, which is about Japanese whaling companies and stuff, but, and it'll have like a scientist or marine biologist or whatever talking, and, well, that guy's ugly. Well. What does that have to do with anything? Don't it doesn't matter what he looks like. Pay attention to what he's saying. He's not here to look good for you. He's here to tell you something. He's spreading. He's here to educate you. Yeah, that's that's what you watch documentaries for is to educate yourself. You don't watch them to to get like a little fucking peep show or whatever. That's not what they're for. <clears throat> and I, I've I've actually been around her when she sexually objectifies men and all that. Like this guy we call Hitman because he's got a shaved head. Yeah. Oh, remember the Hitman dude? And she's I know, always I like, know. And, 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 all the time. Oh, and she'll and then she'll dog on fucking Handlebar Johnny 
about, oh, he's creepy, he's gross. Oh, he's a creepy weirdo because he asked me out on a date. Okay, so he's like in his 50s and she's like, you know, in her late 30s. Okay, I can see there's a problem with the age difference and, and perception and all that, right? But then when this but guy... Really, what it really comes down to, before, I know what you're going to say, but let me just interject real quick. What it comes down to is it's all about looks, because if the guy looked a certain way and was still that age, she would totally go for him. Just like she talks about how she's she would like to get with Harrison Ford, even though he's 70 years old now. Yeah, like, whoa, Harrison Ford, Harrison, Richard Gere, my mom. All these guys are old. And they're old enough to be her dad. Yeah, but yet, you know, it, it literally is just as shallow as, you know, it, it has nothing to do with being shallow. People like what they like. You know, you can't help what you're attracted to. But don't fucking say one thing and then actually act like another. You know what I mean? It's, it's hypocritical to say that, well, my, my looks are important, but apparently they are very important. <laughs> They are, and and see, it, it women's entitlement attitude. And like they the feel they're entitled to get what they want. Oh, and the, this hand, this guy who we nicknamed Handlebar Johnny because we don't actually know his real name. He's got a handlebar mustache, and um, so it's creepy that he asks her out because of the age difference. I guess that's why it's creepy, or whatever, and the fact that she's not attracted to him. But he yeah. asks out a woman who's. Older old enough to be, yeah, exactly, older than him, and pretty much old enough to be his mom, and then, and then that, you know, and, and that's then, also creepy. I mean, he's just looking for somebody to to probably alleviate the loneliness and yeah, all I mean, that. He's old. He's old too. I highly doubt he's looking to get laid. And if he was, why would he go after a woman who's like seventy? Seventy three. She's seventy three. Why would he go? I mean, it, it's like whenever people get older. That's what, you know, people, old, like, old people, they always, you know, they always want to talk to, like, anyone, pretty much. Anybody. Yeah, they want like, somebody to socialize like with. Like, Possum comes in, in there, and he'll just <laughs> talk about what, the only thing he knows how to talk about is... Medical you know, illnesses. Med- yeah, that he, that he does or does not have, you know, who knows. Most likely he doesn't <clears throat> have these horrible diseases and, and maladies. And injuries that, you know... But, like, he comes in there because he needs someone to talk to. He's old as fuck, he probably doesn't have any living relatives, and if he does, they probably don't talk to him. <laughs> But it's like, you know, old people, that's how they are. I, I highly doubt he's, he's trying to hook up these women. And if he is, so fucking what? It's, only, it's, it's okay if he looks a certain way, so why is it not okay if he doesn't? All you have to do is say no. You don't have to make a big fucking deal out of it. <clears throat> but Barbarossa, <clears throat> here's, here's one thing that will really, really reveal it uh, <clears throat> about female nature. Barbarossa had brought up the point that and he's very correct, and I, I had not noticed it before until now, and it's true. Uh, you see feminism spread all over the world and take root in these countries faster than it did in America. Mm-hmm. Like, for example, India. Because it is. It's the key. <clears throat> it's the key that opens the door. It, it, it is, and it's unlocking female nature, and it's... Women have been very receptive to it because it speaks to their inherent self-interest uh, of where they believe that they are at the center of the universe. Why? Because they have a vagina. And it used uh, to be a really important thing. <clears throat> anyway, um, but um, what Barbarossa brings up is that. For example, in India, and I have some friends in India, and it, it's it's a horrible situation for them right now. India is a country that is known for being thousands... It's a civilization that's thousands of years old. Mm-hmm. Um, it's the birthplace of Buddhism and and, um, and Hindu, and which those religions are around 2,500 years old. And I'm sure India has existed before then. <clears throat> the point is these civilizations such as India and in other countries in Asia they are thousands of years old well look at Egypt it's happening in Egypt too and gosh we all know how old Egypt is it, at least 5,000 years old okay and you see civilizations that are thousands of years old and they have just a pretty rigid traditionalism of supposed patriarchy, and then all of a sudden 
within 20 years, in less than 20 years, they are almost as almost as feminized as Western countries such as America. I mean, and, and feminism virtually springs up overnight. And, <clears throat> and now why would that be? What it is, feminism is like a form of software, and it taps in and, and utilizes the, the psychological hardware of women's minds. It's also uh, it's like <clears throat> an enabler. It's like you want to yes. act like a piece of shit, a total, total terrible person. Well, you're allowed to now because... And that's why you hear girl power and all yeah. that. Now, now, men have their own kind of unique psychological programming and all yeah. that. Well, one thing, let me... Uh, now it's all good, fine and good. If everyone wants to be, if everyone wants to be a terrible person, that's all cool and everything. But they should have to. They should be equal. Circ- there should be. Yeah, there should be a universal to, standard. Yeah, I mean, if if, if <clears throat> you know, you always hear about, well, men get to sleep around. Why well, can't women? It's like women do sleep around, okay? So we. we've And got when that. a man does it, it's shamed. Yeah, it's like, <clears throat> um, so women do it now too. Let's have an equal perception of the act. Actually, women probably sleep around more than men because women actually control who gets laid that's in also, society. That's also because true. we put so much power in women's hands, and they behave so fucking irrespons- irresp- uh, irresponsible with it. I mean, look, for example, we've talked about blacks. Okay. <clears throat> now, you know, you hear people talk all kind of trash about blacks and all that. Well, whether or not blacks are shitty people, whether or not they're, you know, um, a horrible ethnic group, which we do not believe that they are, we're not into that kind of racism, white, you know, white supremacy stuff. We're not white supremacists. <clears throat> but we'll talk about racial issues because we do have some friends of different ethnic backgrounds and all that. And so the awareness of people and their different heritage does, you know, manifest. Uh, You know what, a century ago, you know, as we've said before in a previous video, a century ago, black men were like the shining pinnacle of moral character in society. I mean, they took care of their families. You know, even even 60 years ago, yeah, I mean, the black man did excellent for himself, really, in his personal character, and was really somebody to be admired. Um, and then now you see a bunch of black men out here, and I'm not going to dispute it, but yeah, they are, you know, not living the good life and being somewhat problematic. Now, is it their fault or not? I mean... They are responsible for what they do because they are people. However, my point is, how did they get that way? Because they never used to be that way. Blacks used to be very... They they used to be... How to say that? They used to be very respectable and admirable. Now, there are some that are, just like there's all kind of people of all different groups or whatever who are admirable, no, you know, noble, respectable, um, you, you and all what, that. What you're getting at is... Feminism that, has destroyed the black family and yeah, fucked up black well, people. Well, I mean, that's just... That's not even the half of it, because feminism has destroyed the family in general, which has therefore led to, you know, you can you can argue that, oh, well, well black guys, you know, my, my, they don't get the, the things they need or whatever because they didn't have the right family unit, but it, it happens to anyone that doesn't have exactly, the right family Exactly, exactly. It happens to anybody. Feminism destroys the family, <clears throat> and it causes all kinds of psychological problems for the people involved. But my point is, it has partic- particularly destroyed the black race. And that's sad, because, like I said, a century ago, even just a, you know, 50, 60, 70 years ago, the black race was... Well, I'm talking about westernized blacks. You know, we're just very respectable people <clears throat> and all that. And I believe it's in their nature to be respectable and to be and to just triumph under adversity and all that. However, they have been severely crippled uh, because of 
I mean, well, look at it. I watch these videos on YouTube, and it's really sad. I, I, I'm kind of puzzled <clears throat> by this trend in which black women no longer want to date black men. And I'm like, what, what's going on here? You know, and, and in effect, they become race haters. They hate their own ethnicity, and then they want white men. I'm like, well, that's nice and flattering that, you know, the races, the different ethnicities are, in effect, getting along with each other, each other and in, intermingling. And that's all fine and great because now we're accepting each other as one big family, a human family. But I'm like, what? well, why are black women wanting white women? And then I see these white same black... Men. No, white, yeah, white men, I'm sorry. And then you see these, these same black women, they complain and gripe and hate on black men, and it's just disturbing because, I mean, in effect, they hate their own race. Not overall in general, but they are hating members of their own race which happens to be the men. And then you see these black men, and then they want to date white women, which, I mean, you know, that's fine. You know, we're all getting along and just, you know. It's almost, it's like the, the <clears throat> opposite of that movie, Diary of Tired Black Men is really good or whatever. Yeah. But it, and basically what you just said about, you know, basically the, the black men want white women, white, black women want white men, and it's just like that movie. It's a good movie. And, uh, but it doesn't address the problem. The reason why the people, it's not, it has nothing to do with race, it has to do with behavior. Well, r the way relationships and things go nowadays mm -hmm. is because of feminism. You know, the, the black guy thinks that, oh, well, black women are ridiculously entitled and blah, 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 and I'll, I'll just go get a white woman. And white men, white women <coughs> will say, or black women will say the same thing about. Black men. Well, well, I'm trying to deal with him. I'll just go find a white guy. And it's like, yeah, it sounds like a good idea at first until you realize that you're going to run into more of the same thing because it has nothing to do with. It has nothing <laughs> to do with race, for one thing. And change, just deciding to. Well, it's, it's like the whole. Well, well, Western women just aren't good enough. I'll just go to Asia and get a woman there. And they're being. You know, and. I, we have a friend in Russia, and this is, you know, well, he's, that's kind of Eastern Europe, but he says even women in Russia are just about as shitty as they are in America in terms of entitlement attitude, and they're very toxic and all that. And this is in Russia, the, the home of it's communism. It's basically wishful thinking, though, <clears throat> for someone to think that they can change race and find something, like, I'm not, I mean, you can find someone that you get along with any in any race or culture but to think that since you can't find someone that's your own race that you know well then I well maybe it's just a problem with my race I'll find someone in the other yeah the grass is not greener on the other yeah, side it's the same <clears throat> thing it's just you might it may seem it may seem like it's different but it's not because it's just like if you if you if you come to a crossroads where you either stick with your race or go into another race if you go to another race, you'll eventually find someone. Just like if you stick with your own, you'll eventually find someone. Yeah. Like that will that will you know it's not like it's gonna be your soulmate, but you will eventually run into a situation in which you, you enjoy you yeah you get with someone else. <clears throat> but it's it's foolish to think that if something's not working for you in your current scenario, that maybe it'll be different somewhere else, or maybe it'll be different if it's some other race. It, it's not about that. It's really just it's a matter of. The humans, people, the human the psychology. Themselves. Yeah, it's a matter of the psychology between the two genders and how they act towards each other. That's, and you know what? That's why relationships don't work. <clears throat> I, I just want to give a warning to black men. Uh, I'm just going to tell you, black guys, white women are not your salvation. Uh, you can take it from me and the disposable human doing. Uh, white women can be very shitty and not worth your time and effort. And especially not worth your suffering. Um, you know, if you want to stay with black women, th that's your business. If you want to try a white woman, I'm just telling you, don't expect any better. <laughs> Is that right? Well, really, overall, it's not even, it's not even a race issue. It's like Exactly. It's not about race. It's about human psychology. Yeah. It's like it doesn't matter if you 
go and get with an Asian woman or, you know, a Eastern European or whatever. It doesn't matter because this pl- this this shit's gone. It's pretty much invaded every everywhere. It's yeah, everywhere it's now. it's it's in like practically every country. So I mean, now unless you go to fucking Borneo out in the middle of goddamn Congo or whatever, somewhere in the middle of nowhere and find some tribe of people, maybe then that'll be what you need. But I mean, it's foolish to think that you can just go somewhere else and find. I mean, it's almost it's like. It's almost like, well, I can't find anyone in my neighborhood. Maybe the next one has somebody. And then eventually it's like, well, maybe someone in the next town has one. Maybe someone in the next state. Maybe someone in the next country. Ma. Mm-hmm. Now, uh, we had mentioned this, this advertisement. <clears throat> and, you know, Summer's Eve commercial. And I've seen it, like, last year. And it basically, I've been wanting to talk about this. It's... It's quite it shows, revealing. It shows the uh, the old software that we still run on, basically. Yes, and it's it's very revealing, and I mean it's just straightforward in your face with it, and here it is. We're gonna let you see it. It's the cradle of life. It's the center of civilization. Over the ages and throughout the world, men have fought for it, battled for it. Even died for it. One might say it's the most powerful thing on earth. <laughs> hmm. So come on, ladies, show it a little love. Cleansing wash and cloths from Summer's Eve. Hail to the V. Oh my God. You know the, the first thing I say is it's really such a big disappointment when you <clears throat> see the the production cost of that video. All the work that went into that. And it looks so good and cool. Like I just like I like when something is filmed that way. Like we could see like basically something that's at, it's it, not, it's cinematic, right? Yeah, like a it, movie. It looks good, but also it's just like it's like seeing things that you'll never be able to see today, like the Egyptians, or whatever. You know, whatever. And I'm sure it's not 100 percent accurate to how they are, but it's still cool to see it. And it's really such a shame because <clears> can you imagine how much that campaign costs to make that? I mean, it, it's got to be. So much fucking money, and it, it all goes to spread this fucking bullshit hate. Like, but not, not, I'm not gonna say it's hate. It's just it's total. Like one might say it's the most powerful thing on earth. Yeah, who would fucking say that? I mean, do we go around and be like, man, I'm glad I got a dick because it's like one of the best things ever. Man. Now I know we're portrayed that way in the media, but no, most fucking guys don't do that. And get, yes, I do know some that do, but I mean, anyone with half a fucking brain cell realizes that it's not a big fucking deal. I mean, it, we're all, I mean, both genders, we're born with these fucking parts every fucking day. It's not a big goddamn deal. And it's not the center of civilization. It hasn't been for a long time. Actually, I, I agree with the advertisement. It's just in your face about it. What we're talking about is how society revolves around the vagina and, and everything it is does, expected. It but, does, but it's no longer the center. It is, in a way, but it's not really. It shouldn't be anymore. You, you're right, it shouldn't it be, but my point is that it is. But it, yeah, but it shouldn't be. That's like how you keep mentioning, you know, we need to, we need to stop, stop treating it as if it's like, treating the vagina as if it's like the best fucking thing ever. And, you know, there's 7 billion people. We don't... We're not about to be extinct anytime soon. We don't need to protect any yeah. one particular vagina because we don't protect any one particular dick, do we? No. No, we don't. We need to be fucking equal. And what is it? I mean, tell me, really, what is so wrong and radical about equality between the genders well, in uh, terms of treatment? Yeah, I mean, uh, that's, that's <clears throat> you always hear these fucking people that, you know, whenever they hear that we're, uh, I don't, you know, 
they don't even know what a MIG toe is most of the time. They just you, you're an MRM or uh, MRA, not not necessarily. But basically, since we have the ideas we do, we're labeled as being MRAs, and they label us for for being haters because we don't agree with feminism. And well, don't you guys know feminism is all about equality? <laughs> no, oh, it's not. Oh, oh, it is because you know um, that's that's not what it fucking appears to be. And if they haven't already gotten equality, because apparently they they haven't. The, haven't had their fill yet. They haven't gotten the equality they need, even though they already have it. So. It's, it's like Jews that keep waiting for the Messiah, right? Yeah. So like, when is it gonna be? When are they gonna finally know that they've obtained equality? And if they haven't, if they haven't already gotten it, are they actually even doing anything to gain it? Because from what it looks to me, they're just going on slut walks and fucking getting on goddamn YouTube, making accounts like Feminist Frequency and East Sarkeesian, and just bitching about stupid shit. And you know, people that say, well, well, mama, mama, Sandra's not real, and if anyone thinks it is... Yeah, Dr. Claw's the person that does that, the Femethius. Oh, she's not the only one. And then, but she's the person we talk about. Yeah, well, I'm actually talking about the guy I was talking about earlier uh, that I saw in that video, but he, he claims, you know, that, oh, well, there's no such thing as misandry, and, and oh, blah, yeah. blah, blah, blah. And uh, I lost the train of thought. I had a point that basically... Along the lines of, you know, if you're allowed to claim that, I'm not even, it's not even a claim, but if you're allowed to, to bitch about misogyny, then, um, why the fuck can't we talk about misandry? Because they're both real, they're both real things. They're, they're both, both real yeah, things. real phenomenons. Yeah. Except, if you, if you express misogyny, you actually have to suffer consequences, but if you... Are misand if you uh, express misandry, it's totally just tolerated. Okay, like women say all the time that they hate men, and it's just oh well, she's just my mama. I hate men. They're assholes. Man, just, it's okay. She's mad because of that guy, that douchebag guy, fucked her over. My mama. It's like no, you don't get to just say it's okay, and if you do, then why can't we? Now, this advertisement, I just want to go over this really quick. It's the cradle of life. Okay, this is where it all begins. We come from the vagina, and we never got off our dependency of it. This is yeah. when we talk about the old software, uh, the old software, and, and uh, you know, software is a metaphor, like how computers are. And uh, Stardust talks about this. That's how we became familiar with it. You know, it all starts with... See, we all come from the from the vagina. Both genders have a predisposition to favor the vagina. This is why women can switch so easily back and forth between having sex with men and women. Uh, they they seem to find pleasure from both of the genders and that sort of thing. That's why men constantly seek female approval. Uh, because the female represents the vagina, the cradle of life, okay? <clears throat> and, um, anyway, and then, uh, and then women prefer women because they trust them and that sort of thing. And it's just, you know, the woman represents the mother, that's, you know, where we came from, and the comfort of, of the familiar and other aspects here. I need to interject uh, real quick while we're talking. While you're on the sort of on the subject of women, sometimes uh, I wouldn't say they prefer women, but they definitely feel more like it's perfectly safe and secure to be with women. They don't have to worry about being around women, but being yes, around a guy is very dangerous. And yes, because women are that you know the the that caring mother that the you know. But at my last job, I remember one of my managers who was an open lesbian. And it was all fine. And, oh, I have nothing against lesbians. And she was really cool and all that. And she, I remember her complaining about women. About I remember, how yeah. She's like, God damn women today. Ma, ma, ma. And I started laughing because it was so funny to hear it come from a woman. Like, she was complaining about how women today don't want, they don't want to be in anything serious. They just want to dick around and do whatever the fuck they want to. And she was complaining because, you know, she's like, well, I can't find anyone that, that, that all they want to do is just sleep or sleep around. They don't want anything serious. And it's like even women, I guess even certain women see the effects now. 
And I remember when it happened, I was like laughing and just thought it was really strange. But I mean, I guess it's not strange because I mean, if we can see the effects of it by being in relationships with women, why wouldn't she? And you you told me, didn't she get like really fed up with women? And she actually wants to be. She yeah, wants she, to be. She claimed that she was going to go back to guys. She's going to become straight. Yeah, like she was going to be, yeah, well, maybe not for, for, you know, maybe just for a certain amount of time, but was basically expressing discontent with the way females were acting, and then was just basically, well, I'm going to get me some dick, because my, my, women just aren't cutting it, or whatever. <clears throat> so here is a woman who is physically attracted to women because she's a lesbian, however, she is fed up with females' attitudes and and. And and how women's um, uh, and, and and she's fed up with how women's personalities are, and that sort of thing, and how they behave. So even though she's attracted to women sexually, she can't stand their personality. So therefore, she wants to date men instead because they're more tolerable. Yep. Even though she's not very much attracted to men. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> I mean. The. Uh pretty indicative of the uh, problems that, that that anyone faces whenever they look for a relationship with a woman. It, it just... It all basically comes down, maybe it's just, maybe we're just, I don't know. I just feel like, sometimes I think, maybe I'm just, uh, I guess some people will accuse me, well, you just need to lower your standards, or, or you just need to, you know, it's... Give and take thing, my, my, my. Lower your standards to accommodate women so that yeah. they can't go without in the event that they want you. Yeah, and, and it's like, well, I could do that, but I have certain, uh, I don't know, I have principles and I feel I have integrity. And also it's a way to, de to demean you. Yeah, it's like, I shouldn't have to, I shouldn't have to demean myself in order to make someone feel comfortable enough to be around me. Because if after no, if all... No, if no one wants to be around me for who I am, then why the fuck would I want to... I, I just, it's not worth the trade-off. I'm not going to change myself, go through all this, this trouble and pressure, and, and just to, to please someone else. And how, and how often do they lower their standards? They never will for me. And even if they did, I still wouldn't want to... I mean... They don't want to do it so why should I want to? Exactly. And even if they would do it, it still is just a matter of why should anyone have to lower themselves for someone else? I mean, we're all fucking human. And, I mean, I know certain people just don't even care. that they, they, To them, it's ingrained to just, well, to, in order to get that vagina, I have to cow to uh, bow to it and cow toe and just do whatever it tells me. But, but <coughs> I'll get it eventually, and it's worth all the... All the trouble. I don't see it that way. I see it as it, it's not it's not worth the trouble. If that's all it is, I'd rather find someone who actually has a, a personality that I could be like, wow, what a nice personality, and they're not a piece of shit. And you know, and see, we focus on personality because, in my opinion, there are enough physically attractive women out there, with the exception that they mark themselves up with tattoos. And, and piercings, and they smoke, and all that. The, these women are naturally attractive. The way they were born makes them physically attractive to me. Okay. However, I'm not attracted to them really because they smoke, which means they well, smell. They 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 got um they they got a bunch of tattoos and piercings. And but see, here's the thing though. So that negates their physical appealing uh, appearance, but at the same time, they have no viable personality yeah. for me, for yeah, me to like, get interested it's in. It's almost like there's so many attractive women that it's ridiculous. Like, I see them all the time, but I never feel as if, like, why well, I should get with her. Yeah, we never feel like we want these women, or we never feel like we want to be involved in their lives, however, or even interact with them. However, when I do see a woman that acts with some some shred of character or dignity, and and actually acts in a a way that I I think is right, which is they act as you know they act as an equal, that is is much more appealing than, than someone who's just. 
Well, yeah, she looks good, but she's a total fucking cunt. And it, there's, there's, it's like there's so many women who are attractive, but there's not very many women who have good personality. Yeah, well, see, <clears throat> and that's what I'm gonna bring up. Um, I would say, I would say that. I, Maybe, I would say almost half of the women, no, I'd say probably about a third of the women that I see out around in public are physically attractive, okay? Mm. So I, I, I could find myself being physically attracted to about one in four women or maybe one in three women. Maybe almost half of them, but you know what I'm saying. Yeah, I, mean, a, I, I got my preferences. It's about right, like... I mean, same here, I have my preferences, but at the same time, I'm also attracted to women that aren't considered... Exactly in your preferences? Well, no, but society, like, well, well, most people wouldn't go for some of the chicks oh, I'm oh, attracted yeah. to. Oh, yeah, the, 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 the women that, that me and the disposable human doing are attracted to are not exactly the types of women who men are expected to be attracted to. But see, the thing is, like, okay, I was shopping at Walmart just a couple hours ago, and I was just, I was getting a gallon of milk and, like, you know, and some fuel treatment for my car. And I seen, I forget how many women that I was physically attracted to, but, like, it, but at the same time, I don't have any interest in them because, I mean, they, they have not proven that they have a personality worthy of my interest. Yeah, let's see, then these people will go, well, you're just setting your shots too high. Mur, 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 mur. Oh, we're just trying to act like women. I mean, you know, aren't they the authorities in society? And the sad thing is, we're not even trying to act like them, but we don't, I don't know, maybe we, we just don't, we don't play the game like all these other people do. And they, I guess they say it's something bad. They, they don't want to say why. Like, why don't you play the game? Are you gay? It's like, no, but I do have some fucking integrity, and I'm not just going to throw myself out in front of the fucking train every time I see a goddamn woman I like. It's not worth the fucking... And see, here's another thing. What's wrong with us not pursuing women? It doesn't mean that we're any less of a person. Matter of fact, no, it's actually a good thing because we're giving them their space so that we're not harassing them or being yeah, I mean, a burden. If anything, it's like uh, the ignored gender... Uh, because what he says is, you know, he, he's he's attracted to women and he'd like to be with women, but he prefers a woman to come to him. And I'm also at the at the point where a woman would have to come to me before I would express interest in her because uh, every time I have expressed interest, it's either been, uh, you know, rejected or, you know, just not, it doesn't turn out to be the thing I want. And see, it's another thing. And this is why we should reject women and ignore and avoid them because that's all we've ever known. That's all our life has ever been about. That's, that's all that women have ever treated us. Therefore, that's how the world is to us because women have created that perception of reality for us that nobody is interested in us and that the world is just simply about people rejecting people. Would you say that's about right? I'd say it's about right. And, and, but at the same time, it, it sounds bad, but it's, it's kind of a good thing because whenever you go without something, you realize you don't need it. It's exactly. not necessary to your survival. You see that, well, you know... Since there's seven billion fucking people, would it? you say it's a it's a realignment of perception of? Yeah, because they put society puts such a big, huge, like, you know, pressure on. Well, well, my, my, from from day one, you're taught that you know all these fucking little fairy tale fancies about. My, my, you're you're gonna be some girl's prince charming one day, my, my, my. And then you, then you know your whole life. That's all you think about in the media, in the movies, and everything pushed into your idea relationships. Yeah, ma ma ma. And then throughout high school, I mean, you go and it's a puberty. form of validation. Yeah, you go through puberty, and it's like you you do have an attraction to females, and it's pushed like you know you you find out about these things. You're like, yeah, man, women sure are hot, ma ma. But. What, and you you go this idea is in your head the whole time. That and you, you know this you is to prepare someone, and this is there to prepare you to be addicted to the drug, yeah. which is vagina. 
Yeah. And, 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 and the it's, re- it's a it's a it's a way to keep things the way they are. And and a vagina is really like it's almost like a a point of focus because it, it branches into a larger t- uh, subject matter of the psychology between men and women. Yeah. And um. But you know, I mean, you get up to, and eventually you, you keep believing this and believing it, and eventually you have to learn to the contrary that, unlike an automobile that needs gasoline in it to run, you don't need vagina to exist. However, you do need food, you do need water and shelter and other things, and it's like so you get a job in order to keep yourself afloat and and you know keep yourself alive. So you're getting the things you do need. And you could be getting, you could be like throwing all this money away on something that you don't need. You know what I mean? Like, and I'm well, it's so- like in Fight Club. Adverta- advertising has us chasing cars and clothes, uh, working jobs that we hate, so we can buy shit we, we, we don't, don't need. need. Yeah, and like, really all, really all you need is the basic, the the basic essentials: food, water, and shelter. And you don't even really need shelter. But you know what? Yeah. Knowledge and wisdom is more important yeah. than fucking validation, yeah. you know, through the pursuit of vagina. Because yeah, I mean, it, it's like if 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 we never had our bubbles popped, and we would never know the things we do now, and we would never realize the inner strength that we do have. To and and the bubbles being popped is women's fault and how they treated us. Yeah. And see, and the reason why I kicked my girlfriend or my former girlfriend out of my apartment, um. Is because the shit she fucking pulled, and I mean, here it is for over a year. I gotta hear about how men are cheaters, and men shouldn't have the internet, and how men shouldn't have webcams because it turns people into cheaters and all this other shit. And what does she do? Has her ex boyfriend over here? Now she told me she just wanted to talk to him for a while and socialize with him, and I let her do it because. You know, it's like, hey, this is her friend. It's important to her. She hasn't seen him very much because he's busy working all the time or whatever the circumstances are. <clears throat> okay. So I let her have her, her freedom, you know, and all that. And I thought he was just going to swing by here for a couple hours after work and then he's going to go home. Nope. Well, like 36 hours. Uh, 33 and a half, oh. I believe it was. Because what happened was he came here. And at about 7 o'clock in the morning, he fell asleep. Uh, first thing he does is he falls asleep. He, he worked night shifts. So he fell asleep on my floor, my living room floor, at 7 o'clock in the morning. And then he proceeded to sleep 11 hours until 6 p.m. And I figured, okay, good. Now he's up. Now he's awake. Uh, <clears throat> now he'll get in a couple hours of social time. And then he'll leave before 11 p.m., right? Nope, nope, nope. No, I thought he'd at least be gone by midnight. Nope. He stays all night again. Takes a, takes a few sips, maybe drinks about a shot of vodka in the space of 20 minutes. Okay. Not really enough to get drunk. Okay, but the point is, oh, he's been drinking. Now you can't expect him to get behind the wheel because that would be wrong, right? So he ends up staying the night, okay? Well, he goes to bed, you know, uh, about 4 o'clock in the morning. Uh, him and my former girlfriend, which, you know, uh, they, they were sleeping together on my living room floor, spoon position, central style with his arm around her and all that, for me to wake up and find the next morning. <clears throat> it was all a ploy to see if you exactly like, if you would beat the living shit out of him he want, and fulfill her fucking needs. She used... Him and, you know, she used her ex-boyfriend and me at the same time for her own fucking ego boost because she told me later she that, that she actually got pissed because I didn't kick him out. You know, I mean, yeah, I was not happy afterward because he overstayed his visit. And, I mean, come on. God damn, dude. 33 and a half fucking hours. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I had to bring you over here to get him out of there because, and, and to get her out, you know what I'm saying? Because, you know, they don't want to be around you because you're either boring or just, you know, like you get on their nerves or whatever. Basically, the re- I, I don't remember how they got away. It was one, 
I fucking specifically asked to clean all your guns in front of them or whatever. And I was specifically being really noisy, like, you know, releasing the slide and letting it clank cooler all the way and whatever. And then I remember I was on the laptop looking up funny videos and just laughing really loud. Like, and it wasn't even doing it on purpose. I was just laughing because it was funny. And I was basically ruining their experience together. So they left, mm-hmm. which was the initial goal anyway. I just didn't know how it would be accomplished, but it, it happened pretty easily. And, uh... So anyway, and I mean, and she got mad at me afterward because she expected me to be the shit out of him and throw his ass out on the pavement. And like, well, she wanted a drama fest. Yeah. She wanted some Jerry. She told me, you know, well, basically, she wanted some Jerry Springer shit to happen. She's like, you were supposed to get all mad and defend my honor. I mean, what fucking honor does she even <laughs> possess? What a bitch. It's, it's imaginary, just like exactly. a fucking fairy tale romance yeah, novel. Exactly. So anyway, dude, I mean, like, and I, you know what? And I was like, I mean, I don't whistle because I don't know how to. I mean, I'm 32 years old and I never even learned how to whistle. And honestly, it's not important to me. But like, remember how after she left to go hang out with her, uh, you know, at her mom's house with her ex boyfriend and all that, and it was basically a situation where it's like I'm just pa- I, literally I'm grabbing all her stuff out of my apartment and I pile it up on the living room floor. Remember that? Mm-hmm. And and then I call up her mom and like it's like, hey, get her up here. Um, I don't want her living here anymore after that fucking stunt she pulled. I mean, I actually did not cuss, but <clears throat> uh, when I was talking to her mom. But it's like, because I was still too much of a nice guy back then. Um, so anyway, and then... Uh, I um, call up her mom. It's like, uh, you need to get her over here. You need to take her stuff. Uh, I'm kicking her out and all that. Well, her mom didn't even tell her. And then later when she comes back here and she's totally unaware because they didn't want to hurt her feelings and all that by telling her that she's homeless now. <laughs> so anyway, <clears throat> so whenever she gets here, she sees all of her stuff on the living room floor, piled all neatly and stuff, you know, I don't want to give her a reason to fucking trash my shit. So anyway, and then first thing, she comes to the door and sees it, her, her, the expression on her face and her eyes got real big. She's like, what the fuck is this? A bitch ain't living here anymore. And were you here when it happened? No. Okay, you had left. So anyway, oh yeah, you had left right before they showed up, right? I think so. And uh, so anyway... And then I had a talk with her in front of her mom and her brothers and all that. And, you know, I was telling her it's like, and I was still too much of a nice guy. And I was just basically, I kind of sound like a guidance counselor or whatever. It's like, well, it's just, you know, it's not what you're supposed to do. So anyway, and then I wanted to kick her out right then and there. And her mom had the van there, so, you know, or with her. So she could have, you know, when she brought my ex-girlfriend back here, so she could have um, taken, you know, all that stuff. And she only lives like six miles, you know, what? No, not even that. I mean, like maybe four and a half, five miles away from here or where I live. So it, it wouldn't have been too much of a burden to bring all that stuff over there. Well, you know, back at her mom's house. Well, you know, my, my former girlfriend didn't want to move out. Uh, so what she did is she used a ploy and she used the child like Esther Viller talks about using children as hostages mm-hmm. she, uh, my, my former girlfriend um, whom I often refer to as my former owner she said well if you kick me out now if you kick me out tonight the baby will have to sleep in the cold you know mm-hmm. our, our kid you know who was only seven months old or whatever like, no baby sleeping here and I, I should have I should have had guts and spoke up, but it it never occurred to me because I wasn't used to ploys, you know. Because I, I mean, this is the first relationship I had been in, you know. I'm like, you know, like you don't fucking use ploys, you know what I'm saying? I was always taught that that shit was wrong, and so here she is, basically using the fruits of her vagina, you know, um, as fucking like strong arming me and using it as fucking like emotional and psychological leverage and of course I'm not going to kick the kid out in the cold you know and all that who would nobody would Mm -hmm. 
Okay, and what I should have told her is like, bitch, the baby has a home here. You don't. Your ass gets out. But no, I fucking fell for the ploy. She got to stay there that night. And then, you know, um, she slept on the couch. I slept in the bed because, after all, I fucking pay rent here. She never paid for any of this shit. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> the best she can do is buy me some groceries with her fucking food stamps that I pay for anyway because I worked, you know, because I had been in the job market for over a decade paying taxes for more than a decade, in which she had never done, um, you know, because she don't work a job. And uh, well, she doesn't have to. Everybody gives her a shit. I mean, she, for goddamn, for, for what was it? For for four years, she lived from boyfriend to boyfriend, and basically only had her vagina to offer as collateral. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I mean, it's fucking pathetic. And but honestly, with as fucking ugly as she is, I mean, it basically had to come down to using the fucking vagina. You know what I'm saying? Because she definitely couldn't use her, her personality because it was shitty. Yeah, very. Um, and her personality was actually worse than her looks. Yeah. And, like, I mean, and, and pay, you know, my last month when I went to pay, or earlier this month, when I went to pay rent to my apartment manager, you know, she was talking about, you know, my, my former girlfriend and all that. And she asked me what attracted him, what, why I was attracted, you know, okay, if I'm so fed up with my former girlfriend, which mm. is, you know, like, my apartment manager was, was puzzled, you know. Why you gotten with her? Yeah, you know, it's like. Yeah, because she fucking stalked you for two goddamn months. No, it was six months. Whatever. Uh, but anyway, and my, my apartment manager asked me. Well, what made you attracted to her in the first place? You know, talking about my former girlfriend. And I, I just basically had that... Um, I'm just going to show you really quick uh, the kind of reaction I had. Um, a bee. A, a child. A child. A big child. Uh, basically, I'm going to get to the part which is relevant to how I expressed my answer. Did your twilight experience turn out to be what you expected? Not wait to see this. Uh, it's very, uh, almost heartbreaking because they don't want it to be over. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a little bittersweet, isn't it? Um, for them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's basically how Robert Pattinson expresses that, you know, where he says, um, for them, that's, um, that, that's kind of how I express some of my um, answers um, where he's like, this part here where he's like, let's see, what is it? For them! Wait, right before that. Bittersweet, isn't it? Um, right. The, the look on his face right there where he's like trying to think of what to say and then he comes up with something witty, something witty all of a sudden. That's how I was like a few weeks ago when I was talking to my apartment manager when my apartment manager says, well, what got you attracted to, to your former girlfriend in the in the first place? I'm like, um, uh, well, uh, you know, because, like, I was 30 years old and never dated before, and, you know, I didn't want to look a gift horse in the mouth, you know? I, I didn't want to reject her, like, basically, what I... Basically, I wanted you to give... You gave her what you'd never been given, basically. Exactly. I, you know, I gave her a chance like nobody ever did to me, you know? I, like... You know what I'm saying? Like, everybody fucking rejected me my whole fucking life. You know, in terms of when I would go to pursue relationships and all that. And, um, and, it's, but it's like, so then when this one girl comes up and wants a relationship with me, why should I say no? I mean, that will be my only opportunity to, to be in a relationship. You know, and it's fucking pathetic. It's like, uh, see, this is what's so wrong about it. Oh, if a girl wants to date a guy, well, he better fucking step. You know, he he's better. Like, he's basically he, he, it's free access. It's like here you well, go. it's like he better accept it or yeah. else you know he's a dumb fuck. You know that's that, that's how it's portrayed. But then, whereas every guy, every guy that a chick has that turn that a chick will turn down is basically she'll wait until the right one asks her and then say yes. It's all to them. It's just. 
got just gotta wait, just looking at their watch, like just gotta wait for the next one to come on well, so I can see. Well, like you know, so when a guy's not interested in a girl, it's like, well, you don't want to hurt her feelings, you don't want to break her heart, you need to give her a chance. But then when, bitch me a chance. but whenever a girl doesn't want a particular guy, you know, then then people get onto the guy and they're like. Well, you need to respect her feelings, okay? Leave her alone, you creepy rapist, man. And this this what pisses me off, that society fucking revolves around the goddamn fucking vagina. And, uh, so anyway, um, like, okay, so, um, yeah, my former girlfriend and all that, and, I mean, like, it just, you know... Anyway, um, but the whole relationship thing, like, and see, my former girlfriend at first, for the first two months or whatever, she, maybe three months, she put up a really good front that she was, you know, a person that, that somebody could really get along with and all that, and dude, she, she basically wanted a guy, like, so freaking bad. I mean, like... Yeah, she needs to have somewhere to live. Yeah, that's true, but I'm just saying, like, in other ways, you know, she she had been without a guy for longer than she, she felt like she had to. Yeah, yeah, dude. Dude, I mean, you, you don't even know what it was like. Uh, the, the uh, Well, basically, she started the intimacy uh, because I was afraid to. Uh, I was afraid to even hold hands with her. I mean, basically, I kept it all, like, basically, like, like professional at first and all that. And I made the mistake of impressing her with the first date. Because, um, cause, you know, I was I was raised and trained. You did, it's what, like, you did what you were supposed to do. Yeah, I did what I was expected to. Like, the first date, um, it, it impressed her so much that she basically called me up that night and just straight up said we were in a relationship. You know, like, because, and I guess she never had a date that good or whatever, and that is, that was the first time I ever went out on a date in my whole life, and this was two weeks after I turned 30 years old, and, you know, because... You know, I was raised on how you're supposed to treat a woman and all that. And that's why you get fucked over so much. Pretty much. I mean, you and I, uh, you know, we, we both we both found out the hard way that yes, it it it, it you really can treat a woman too good. Mm-hmm. And that's how you got fucked over and that's how I got fucked over because my former girlfriend would fucking walk all over me and all this other shit. And um and I mean, it's like that dude we were making, you know, that, that we were talking about um, on that Facebook post where he said, you know, my, my girlfriend cheated on me, you know, that I was engaged to, and, and so I'm single now, anybody want to hook a brother up and all that? And uh, what, I, what, I, what I would want to say to a guy like that is like, oh, she cheated on you, you must have treated her too good. Mm-hmm. And, you know, honestly, you know, like you're talking about, you know, if a girl would pursue you uh, and all that. I don't know if I would, you know, accept a girl and all that. I would actually want them to fucking, like, endure the shit that they put us through. And what's wrong with rejecting a girl? I mean, they do it to guys all the time. I mean, okay, here's the thing. What I taught was wrong is hitting a woman... Um, raping a woman, uh, stealing a woman's belongings, invading her privacy and all that. I was taught you're not supposed to do that. But hey, guess what? I was never taught that you can't give them space. I was always told, you know, I, I would always see on TV and, and, and you know, you'd see in public, it's like, well, you need to respect women's space. I mean, it wasn't really said to me. It was said to other people that I had seen on TV or scenarios you see in pop culture or whatever. And so I'm like, hey, that's right. You can't get in trouble for giving them their space. I mean, you know, isn't that what they want? You know, so yeah, you can get in trouble for soliciting sex with them 
if they're not interested, yeah, you can get in trouble for that. But you can't get in trouble for leaving them alone. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly what we need to do. Because they can't... Okay, let's say... You know, for let's hypothetically, you know, women act like they want a fucking, you know, lesbian utopia. The way, the way they I, won't enjoy it. Yeah, they won't. The way I look at it is... Well, um, you've seen that, where that one lesbian who was your boss at your job actually wanted to go straight because although she was attracted to women, she was fed up with their bad personalities. The way I look at it is like, I, I, don't, I don't even try to flirt with women, and... You know, if they try to flirt with me, I usually don't even realize it's flirting or I don't know how to respond. But, like... For me, I'm afraid to respond, you know? Honestly, they should, uh... I feel like, you know, I'm not going to make any special exception for them, and they shouldn't make one for me. And if they do make one for me, they should have to go through just as much trouble as I would have to go through in order to get their attention. That is if we're going to be about equality! But I don't even... It's almost like I don't even think about, like, okay, well, she said this, now she needs to say this for me things. It's just literally just, like... If I think someone's worthy, like if they if they if they try to talk to me, then it's it's good. I'll try to talk to them back, but I'm not gonna give them what they want back immediately. Mm-hmm. And even if even if they you know do such and such things, say I mean I probably wouldn't even necessarily respond. I mean at all, and even if I did, it probably wouldn't be in the manner that they wanted it to be. Oh yeah, I mean, that's what they do to me whenever I try to. You know, do anything. That's that's how it is for me. So why should it be any different for them? I mean, I've been thinking like and it's like I didn't. I don't. I don't. I don't ask to be treated a certain way. I just go if I'm going to, you know, whatever. If I'm in public doing something, and one of them that's at their job tries to talk to me. I mean, I didn't ask to be talked to. I usually don't even make much conversation at all with anyone <coughs> when I'm in public that I don't know. I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll the bare minimum of like. You know what I'm. What I have to say, like, more than I do my mom last afternoon. Whatever they say, I mean, yeah, yeah. You just tell them to go pet some. Pretty much. <laughs> um, I've been thinking lately and having dreams about this, like in our, like where I have this reoccurring dream, where there's women who like they behave in a way in which would be interpreted as flirting if a man did it. Um, and that sort of thing, and it's it well, seems it's like, like what happened to me the fucking day. Yeah, you should talk day, about that. Talk about goddamn that. night uh, that chick was flirting with me, and even admitted that it was flirting, but it wasn't flirting. It's just her personality. But it is flirting because it is. But it's not because it's her personality. Oh, that's happened to me. So what the fuck is it? Which one is it? Is it is it not or is it? Because you say it is. But it's not because it's not you consciously doing it. It's just personality. No. You don't get to cop out like that. She was doing it. and I know. Like, and there were multiple witnesses. So she Basically, she wanted an ego boost, right? And, that, and she wanted a drama bomb. That's why what happened, happened. Do you want to talk about it? Oh, it'll, it'll take a while to get into depth. And we already got this running pretty long. Yeah, but it's worth it. Um... Well, I'm just going to mention really quick. Well, what you should do is we should end this one. Let me check my email, and then we'll start another one about that. All right, I wanna, I'm just going to say a few things real quick, and then we can end this one. Like, what, like I've been having this dream that, you know, women are kind of pursuing me and all that. And, you know, I'm kind of fed them. up. With, yeah, and I kind of reject them and friend zone them and all this other stuff. And I'm kind of getting fed up with this shit. It's like, no, I don't... You know, what? okay... Um, you know, it's like, I don't want to go back to that life. I don't want to go back to that lifestyle of where... Yeah, uh, I kind of know what you mean, like, because whenever I think about, like, think about the good times I've had or whatever in my previous relationship, uh, and it's like, yeah, those times were good, but other than the the time, and most of the times that were good weren't just me and her, it was like, you know, uh, just a group of friends or whatever. But, like, sometimes where it's me and her, but mainly it's just, like, I don't even want that mentality or mindset anymore. Like, that 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 ignorance, you know, ignorance is bliss. I don't want that back, and I don't want to, like, if I, if I think about, you know, reliving that, it's something that I would not want to do. Like, with some exceptions. Some of the things I would like to, you know, uh, 
relive or, or do with someone else, but it's like the the overall experience I don't want like not not the bad experience but overall the you know the whole thing from start to finish like all the little things that you know are in relation to little things just fuck that I don't want to be around that say it's a thing I mean like I don't want to be like where it's like I don't I can't just decide like it's freedom you know I can do whatever I want to whenever I want to all day like, yeah, if you want to play Minecraft yeah. or watch a movie. You yeah, know? it's like, I mean, uh, right now I don't have a job, but if I had a job, that would be my only responsibility is to go, to go to work. But whenever I come home, or, you know, I could do whatever I want. But since I don't have a job, uh, and I'm trying to get one right now, I'm getting ready to go to school, but um, I basically can do what I want to do. Like, if I feel like watch, literally, if I feel like watch a movie, I can watch a movie. If I want to play a game, I can play a game, take a shower. If, you know, I took a shower today because it was like, really fuck the house is all smoky because goddamn something I was cooking Friday the last but took a shower I got out of the shower decided to clean up some stuff on my computer like sort stuff into folders or whatever that hadn't been sorted yet um I played some fucking video games or whatever and basically did whatever the fuck I wanted to all day and don't have to worry about someone else being like man I'm bored and I wanna do this well, Which take me that, take me this place because I don't got a car. That that particular person wasn't very. The, they weren't. They were not bad in that sense. Like they could generally occupy themselves. Mm -hmm. But still, I don't even have to worry about the fact that like, because I would still worry like, are, are, do you want to do something else? Are you entertained? Because I know I'm fucking entertained when I'm doing what I choose to do. I do that because that's what I want to do at that time. Mm -hmm. That's what entertains me, and I shouldn't have to worry about someone else. And that's, like, the one of the benefits is, like, I don't have to worry about someone else, like, not being fucking satisfied. I mean, look at the freedom I got. I mean, like, I come here to my apartment, you know, I come home from work, and um, I can watch a movie if I want to. I can, you know, I can read some, you know, um, I can read several of these books I got. Or I can do whatever in my spare time. Plus, you have extra money from not spending it on women. That's true. In order to buy other things that you, like, want or, you know, something else to entertain or whatever. You know, people will say that we're sad because, well, these guys, they, just, blah, blah, blah. they don't have any, blah, blah, blah. like, what a pathetic existence. Like, it's just projection. Yeah, that, and it's just, it's all a matter of personal taste. If you, if, if vagina's that important to you that you're willing to throw away your money, then, you know, power to you. Go do whatever you want to. That's your fucking, that's your right. You can do whatever you want. And, and speaking of vagina, I mean, look at it. Okay, like, what was it? Two and a half it's months. Like, it's all, like, is momentary pleasure worth a fucking... Lifetime like, of sacrifice? Not even a lifetime of sacrifice, but like, let's say you get in a relationship, and you get it in whatever, you, you, chances are you're going to just basically be getting vagina. You don't really have any, per, you don't really have any, you know, intellectual conversation or... You know, you don't have a, a good personality with this person. You know, people argue and say, you should have a fall right girl, blah, blah, blah. It's like, no, because almost almost all of them are like this. You can't, you can't find Especially one. now. You can't find one that will treat you as an equal and actually wants to have uh, genuine discussions or, or just to, you know, talk about things. It's all, it's all just about the, the here and the now and, oh, I'm attracted to you. We should, we should, blah, blah, blah. That's all it is. There's nothing else. You, and especially when men are disposable in and, this and also, culture and society. Also, the, the the way women pick men nowadays... That's they, a big problem right there. They don't pick men that they have something in common with. They pick men on, you know, that they're literally almost exact opposites because it's a fun challenge for them to try and get over. But it's like, for, for the dude, what's he supposed to do? Like, if, if yeah, most guys, they, they're just happy to be getting some pussy. But... For someone that wants more than vagina, what are you supposed to do? Because any chick that picks you isn't going to be right for you. Mm -hmm. If she picks you. Yeah. And if, and if you pick a girl, chances are you're not even going to be able to be the person who picks. You're you're a beggar. You can't be a chooser. So, I mean, why would you want to waste time with, I mean, you might as well just go jerk off. If that's all it is, is is the that, that moment, you know, the, a couple... You know, a certain amount of time that's pleasure, but then it's like okay, you get you get a little bit of pleasure, but then whenever the eventually the eventually the relationship will you know end, then you have to think 
uh, about all the heartache that you have that you have to deal with because the heartache lasts, lasts longer than the pleasure. Yeah, it's simply that that's it's just it's a fact. I mean, here it is. It's been eleven months six, since I kicked out my my uh, my former girlfriend, and am I trying to get another girl? No, I'm not. I mean, like, sure that that's like a nice dream to have like a girl who will treat not only me right, but will also treat herself right, and to, um, you know, and to be what she expects others to be, and, but, you know, like, okay, you're talking about getting some pussy or whatever, look at this, two and a half months ago when my neighbor moved in, the, literally, the girl next door, I mean, like, now there's all kind of guys coming and going practically on an hourly basis and you I don't know I don't know if the microphone can pick it up or not but here in a little while you might actually hear it doors shutting and all that and just people talking and just whatever in and out in and out, in and out. but they're very active over there they just mostly listen to the radio and talk and like Get do back well yeah do backflips over the couch or Whatever, dude. Anyway, so, um, this girl, I could have had easy access. She lives literally right next door. I mean, if I wanted to, I can knock on my wall and she can hear it. You know what I'm saying? And honestly, I mean, I'll just, I'll just straight up say, according to my preferences, she is physically attractive, okay? Like, I perceive her as physically attractive, and apparently a bunch of other guys do, too. I mean, dude, how, how many guys have you seen over there? Like, six six and up. Like, six or more at a time. Yeah, I mean, and for every girl... That's the whole fucking parking lot is literally fucking... The whole parking lot is filled every goddamn night. Yeah. Because apparently every fucking guy brings his own goddamn car instead of carpooling. They're all going to the same fucking place, get in one or two cars, not six. I know, and, like, see, and the thing is, is, like, for every girl that will be over there, there'll be at least three guys. Mm -hmm. I mean, th this chick will not hang around with girls. She has, like, maybe one or two female friends that come over, and, uh, and it's a ratio of about three guys to one girl, usually. And it's mostly a bunch of guys hanging out over there. And they never give me any trouble. I mean, basically, honestly, I'm not saying they're afraid of me. Because I don't give them any reason to be afraid. I mean, all I do is sit, is sit in this apartment and keep to myself. And I don't speak to them unless spoken to. And even then, it's very, very tiny amounts of information that's exchanged. Mm -hmm. And I, basically, I pretend that they don't exist. And, um, and, anyway, like, one of them came over and knocked on my door one night, and he asked me if they are bothering me, if their music and noise is, is a nuisance or whatever, and I was just like, no, nah, dude, it's all fine. I mean, 2 o'clock in the morning, sometimes I run power tools in here working on hobbies and projects. I mean, you know, and I make noise, too. We all make noise in this building. And all that, you know, it's this whole universal standard that we all participate in, and, and you know, we all tolerate each other's noise, and it's all fine. But anyway, <clears throat> and he's a total nice guy. Anyway, I mean, the only thing he does that gets on my nerves is he apparently the way he parks his car, and just like it, it seems like it's always in the way. But he always treats me good, and. Like apparently he treats her good or what? I think I think he's her main guy over there because he's out of all the guys that come and go like every day or hour, he's there the most often. And but anyway, my point is is like if I really wanted to, I could I could have had pussy. You know what I'm saying? I mean, it was literally right next door. I mean, I open my door, walk a distance of maybe about seven or eight feet, and then I'm in her place, and then I could go get some if I wanted to. You know, that was back before all them guys found out that she lived there or whatever. And I could have been one of them guys that was like, you know, like rattling the bed springs with her, uh, apparently. But I, I just don't have any interest. 
You know what I'm saying? And, and I mean, and I, I, I mean, I interpret her as physically attractive. And yeah, like hypothetically, yeah, maybe it would be nice to have sex with her. But it's like, it's not even a priority. I mean, it's not even something that really enters my mind. I mean, it's just. You know, I mean, her personality, I've, I've actually recorded a video of her throwing a fucking bitch fit at all the neighbors, and just, when she has these outbursts like that, it's like, no, I mean, I don't care how freaking hot she looks, I mean, <sighs> the personality is just lackluster, you know? I mean, when she's out in my freaking yard yelling and cussing and saying to the other girl that lives upstairs, saying, Bye, Skank! Bye, ho! You know, and this other stuff. I'm like, no, you know? And then, you know, freaking, like, all the fucking drama. Just, just pet him. Anyway, and, you know, I'm just like, you know, you're talking about these, these MRAs and all that, which. We, you know, are not men's rights activists, although we are sympathetic to the cause of the men's rights activists. We are not officially connected with the movement or whatever. Um, uh, we're different. We are elite MIGTO, and that is an elite version of men going their own way. Uh, we, we actually just, you know, we just want to leave women alone. And if we could grow, if we could grow our movement and get more men involved, then eventually if we get more and more men involved, then there will be no rape, will there? Because no men will take sexual interest in women. So if anything, these feminists should support us. Exactly, because we have plans to exterminate rape, and so, yeah. we plan to end sexual harassment. Yep, there won't be either of those two things. Because no. men won't have any interest in women, because men will see what women really are. You know, and we do not advocate going homosexual. You know, I mean, no, we actually, it's that's almost... Just a, that's just a shaming tactic anyways to say, well, if you don't like women, the monster should go gay. No. apparently, if someone d isn't with one gender, then they have to be with the other one, right? Because they can't go without sex. Because like, nobody can. Because everybody loves sex, um, right? Unlike, mm -hmm. unlike women, um, no, we don't need uh, we don't need anyone to to make us just keep us alive. It's not like we need someone's attention, affections, or whatever to to exist. Because exactly. we're, we're simply we're simply we're not dead. So. And see, we, we don't hate gays, but at the same time, our goal is not to make everybody gay. Yeah. Our, our goal is, is basically, honestly, you know, to end this fucking gender war, women are the, women are the ones that's going to have to come to the fucking bargaining table because there are too many pushover nice guy men who get fucked over. And that's the topic of another video that we're going to do very, very soon. Uh, what, in the next few minutes maybe? Probably. All right, so we're going to end this video, um, and honestly, we're going to have to make another analysis video of this Summer's Eve Hail to the V commercial, because me and the disposable human doing, we understand what this means, and there are other people who understand what's in this, this, uh, this advertisement, but the average person doesn't catch on to it, and that's why we need to educate people and all that. I, in just the six seconds that this was playing, I mention, you know, what this means and all that, and in my opinion, the people that made the advertisement did a good job of expressing their point, it's just most people overlook that kind of stuff because it's not Grey's Anatomy or the next contestant on American Idol, uh, so uh, anyway, until next time, I am Manslave, and I'm the disposable human dude. And we are the duo that does the Validation Warfare YouTube channel. So until next time, pet some.